I would now like to invite Mr. Rood Lubbers, Earth Charter Commissioner, to address the audience. Mr. Lubbers was the Prime Minister of Netherlands from 1982 to 1994 and is now a member of the Earth Charter Commission. Your Excellencies, excellent friends, thank you for the hospitality and inviting me here. We are celebrating 10 years Earth Charter. Yes, that document became a conclusion of intensive consultations before that. This all started not in the year 2000, but in fact in 1992. And I was there in Rio de Janeiro, the so-called Earth Summit on Environment and Development. Those days, I had the privilege to attend that meeting as a Prime Minister of the Netherlands. And I watched at that meeting with so many officials that there was another meeting in Rio. This was the meeting of civil society, of NGOs, and of indigenous people. Why? Because they noticed that we, the formal politicians, after the end of the Cold War, I'm talking 1992, were so enthusiastic about market economy all over the world that they said to us, be aware, the nature, Mother Earth, ecology is as important, if not more important, than economy, which you are talking the whole day. So let's go, they said, for a Earth Charter, for a ethical document. This was the really beginning. That meeting there was chaired by Maury Strong, Under Secretary General of the UN. And he got this proposal and he consulted me as a Prime Minister. I said, this is an excellent idea, I'm going to support you. So there we started. He went for an Earth Council. But beyond that, shortly after that the initiative was taken, it was brought to me the fact that Michael Gorbachev, the former boss of the Soviet Union, had become president of the Green Cross and indeed had the same idea of drafting a Earth Charter. So I had the privilege to bring these two people together. And since then, they were the two co-chairs. Shortly after, they were so clever to find Mr. Stephen Rockefeller. You have heard him speaking. And they urged him to take time to draft an Earth Charter. He said yes, not aware that it would take more than five years. Endless discussions with all sorts of people all over the world, basically out of civil society because this is a civil society document. But he understood. He had to speak as well with the religions. So that is quite a job. NGOs, religions, drafting an earth chart. And in the year 2000, we said it's done. We have to conclude. Who is we? We indeed was this gradually group of friends which came out of this initiative included the lady you know so well here, Aminabad, because she lived here 23 years, Kamla Chaudhry, wonderful lady. She has an enormous input in our work. And then together we sat there at the headquarters of UNESCO. We could talk for centuries, but maybe it's better to see the result now as a result. So now we celebrate 10 years Earth Chart. 
let me explain you a little bit more the context. I come from another continent, but when I think back in time, I was born in 1939. I was aware of the enormous developments in the world to overcome the colonial era after the Second World War. These were the days, 1948, that the world produced the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This was meant to assist all the people all over the world in human rights. Okay. Recently, 60 years later, in 2008, we celebrated 60 years Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So I did an effort with some friends to compare that document of 1948 with the Earth Charter. But before I give you some of the differences, what happened in the 60 years in this world, let me tell you first that when the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was drafted, the then Director General of UNESCO sent the draft to Mahatma Gandhi here. And he said, my good friend, what do you think about this draft? And after some time, he received an answer. Mahatma wrote him, I shared this document with a woman I appreciate highly. Later, this proved to be the mother of Mahatma Gandhi. And she said to him, this is an excellent document about the rights of all individuals, very important. But what about our common duties, our responsibilities? This is interesting. Already then, in 1948, this lady said to her famous son, let's not talk only about rights, but also about our common responsibilities. I think this is important. But at the bottom of the Earth Charter, we see that now, that there is a commitment together. Let me very briefly point out what happened in this two generations. Now, we are not talking so much about declarations of independence of people. We have overcome the colonial era. We now are becoming aware that we are all interdependent, all connected, all peoples all over the world, connected as well with nature, together with a common destiny. That's point one. Point two. Now we are aware that we have a responsibility for the sustainable development. You might call this intergenerational solidarity not only solidarity with the people living today in more difficult situations, but also solidarity with future generations. That is sustainability. The third is that we are becoming more and more aware that we are living in a world of diversity, diversity of cultures, diversity of religions, and that we have to see the diversity as a dimension of life enriching us, not see it as a problem that they are different, but enjoy the differences, the diversity of life. You know, this is funny. We, environmentalists, we started with biodiversity. And then someday we understood not only biodiversity is wonderful, but the diversity in cultures and religions of people is wonderful. So let's cherish that. But we have to learn that. This is the third dimension. Interconnected as well with nature, connected with generations to come. The third is the diversity. Then the fourth dimension is that we write in the Earth Charter. Up till now, we fought politicians. Politics are solving all problems. Forget it. Governance will be only effective that we nourish ourselves with spirituality. 
Now I give you an example of that. In my part of the world, you know that business, all these multinational companies are very active and we try to motivate them to go for a people, planet and profit. This is now the short wording for what's called corporate social responsibility. But at some point in time, even the CEOs of companies and many in civil society understood that this is not enough, that we have to work on the harmony in ourselves and the harmony with others. And that to do that, this is not only a question of technology and political governance. So we need spirituality. Now in Europe, we used to talk a lot about spirituality, but you know, European civilization is based on two languages. Latin and Greek. And while we had three P's, people, prophet, planet, we thought it might be good to add a fourth P. This is the P of pneuma. What is pneuma? It's the same as oxygen. It's the same as the freshness in the morning, prana. So we decided to add a fourth P to the three P's. The spirituality, indeed, is an important dimension. Even in this very meeting, we started in the program with a prayer. That's another P. Four Ps. To make clear that spirituality is relevant. So we have the five differences. Living together also with nature, future generations, sustainability, diversity of cultures, the concept that governance, the capacity to change things for the good, is only effective when it is done together with civil society and business, complementary governance. And finally, let's celebrate life together. When we start with a prayer in the morning, we have ended yesterday with the wonderful music, which is another dimension of this. This is very key too. So this is just to give you an impression how I experienced the Earth chart. Yes, I was there from the beginning. I'm blessed. I was a long time in politics, but I spent as much time in civil society. And now I have this enormous privilege to be here with Kartikeya, in the same city where Kamala lived so many years. And she shared her experiences with me. And now I know I'm celebrating 10 years Earthshatter exactly at the place where it should be celebrated, here in Aminabad. Thank you so much.